Hey, Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom here. Um, I actually just got done with a guitar lesson, and it really got me thinking about practicing and what you really need to do to get better at guitar playing in your life. Um, you know, again, I've been I've been teaching for many many years, and I've taught thousands of people how to play guitar. And the lesson that I just had, you know, the the student was talking about, you know all of these different things about, you know, he tries to practice, you know, all of these different techniques every day and he's lost in his practice and he doesn't really know um, where he should be going and what he should be doing. And, um, and then I thought, you know, what I need to do is I, I need to just try and help you by making a video to try and organize yourself a little bit when you're practice. If you really love practicing or playing guitar or you really want to get better at it and it really is a goal of yours, um, I'm hoping some of these tips are going to help you a little bit. So the first thing I want you to understand is, yes, you need to practice on a daily basis. I mean, if you're going to practice once a week, you're obviously not going to make much, much progress. But the truth is, you know, how many people really have pra time to practice for three or hours or five hours or eight hours a day? Um, and the answer is most people don't. You know, most people have a half an hour or an hour or something like that that they can devote each day. And if you have more time, obviously that's awesome. But if you're one of those people that just don't have all that time, Let's try and reorganize the way that you're thinking about guitar playing or, or practicing and see if we can't set some decent, reasonable goals for you uh, to achieve some sort of success. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is success. What does that mean? Okay. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to understand that you have got to figure out who you really are as a guitar player and what your goals are. Okay, here's the problem that I see a lot with students is that they're constantly at war with themselves because they're not good enough, right? They, they don't play their chords good enough or they don't know enough theory or they're not fast enough or all these other things. And so you're constantly pushing yourself down because you, you can't do everything that you wished you could do. That's human nature. I mean, that's the problem with so much of everything in life today is that we're, we're constantly downing ourselves and we're constantly... Um, berating ourselves because we're not good enough at this and we're not good enough at this and we're not good enough at this. So the first tip I want to give you is that you need to start becoming aware of who you really are at this point as a guitar player. What kinds of things are you good at? What kinds of things are you not good at? And you need to find somebody that can help you. I'm not telling you that you need to take lessons from me or you need to take lessons from anybody. Maybe there's enough stuff on YouTube or with, with videos or, or you know magazines that you can learn all of those things. But you need to start really realizing what you are good at and acknowledge the fact that you are good at some things, right? I mean, even if it's strumming, you know, it's like you teach people how to strum and you, you teach people how to play chords and then they're, they're constantly, you know, frustrated because they're not fast enough with scales and things like that. Well, that's going to lead to, to the, the second tip that I want to give you is I want you to remember why you were supposed to play guitar in the first place. And really, this is a basis of foundational enjoyment of life. You got to have fun. Don't forget that the reason you should be playing guitar in the first place, you need to be excited about it. If every day you grab your guitar and you're just frustrated and you hate everything about it, you're not going to want to practice. You know, and even if you're doing it now, six months from now, you're not going to want to do it anymore. So you have got to find a way of having fun. Here is my tip for you to try and have fun. You got to learn songs. You got to learn stuff by other people. Okay. If you wanted to become a great artist, you would have to study art, right? You can't just live on a deserted island and, and all of a sudden become this massive, wonderful painter with no experience whatsoever. Those experiences make up who you are. I mean, look at your life, right? Whether they're good or bad experiences, those experiences define who you are. So you need to learn songs, learn stuff by people. For me, you know, I grew up playing guitar in the 70s and the 80s. There was a barrage of wonderful music to play. You know, if I was playing... Or I was playing... Right? Or I was playing, I mean, anything... You know, from Slayer to the Rolling Stones to ACDC to, uh, you know, Merle Haggard. I mean, I, I learned how to play so many different things. Um, country, rock, all kinds of different things. Obviously, my, my roots lie in rock and metal. I mean, that's what, what I play mostly. But the point is, is that there's experiences every time you learn a new song, okay? 
so not only do you just learn songs because you like them, which is fine, but you start being a bit more strategic about it by learning songs that are going to also benefit you on the elements that you either need to reinforce because you're good at them, or it has elements in there that you're not so good at, so it gives you an ability to practice. So here's the deal. When you learn songs, don't always feel like you have to play every song note for note exactly right, because you don't. You're not going to win an award for it anyway, right? If you feel that strongly that you need to learn a song note for note, that's awesome. But every single song does not have to be what I refer to as a project, and that's what I want to get to. For me, there's two different kinds of categories of songs to learn how to play. There's on this wall, we're going to call all of these songs ego songs. Ego songs are songs that make you do this. They make you feel good about yourself. They are not massively time-consuming, and they're achievable. So you can learn how to play something. Maybe you don't have everything exactly right. Maybe you didn't learn the solo exactly right. But you're able to do it, right? And you feel good afterwards. And it's something that you can continuously play. You can play it tomorrow and next week and next month. And when people are asking you, hey, can you play me a tune? Or what do you like to play? Because people will do that, right? As a guitar player, you got stuff to play. You got songs to play. If you ever go out to a club and you know people want to get you up to jam, there's these general songs that everybody tends to know how to play. You know, yes, I understand the whole battle of, well, I want to write my own original material, which is great. But it's still fun to jam once in a while. It's fun to get together with other musicians and make some music together. So learning how to play cover songs, learning how to play other people's songs, is imperative to your abilities. You know, the more experiences you have with playing music, the more experiences you have with learning songs, those all culminate into who you are as a guitar player. If you have no experience whatsoever playing other people's songs or you know how to play three songs, you don't have a lot of experience in the real world. We'll get to theory and all that in a little bit. So ego songs are songs that are achievable with a minimal amount of your time. Okay, it's very important to think about it that way, because if you're always choosing songs that, you know, are either A, impossible to play or B, require such massive amounts of your time, you're never going to get from the beginning to the end. Now, that brings me to the second category, the songs over on this wall. We're going to call those songs project songs. Project songs are songs that are going to take a lot longer. They have a lot more challenges, whether they're physical challenges, whether they're visual or mental memorizational challenges, whatever they might be. Project songs are going to take a lot more of your time. Project songs are awesome because they keep pushing you forward as a musician, your technical ability or your, your theoretical understanding or whatever it might be. The problem that I see a lot is that most people take on way too many project songs, and then they wind up with a mess of things that they, they can't achieve. So they're trying to learn this song and this song and this song and this song, and they can get through this much of it, but then they get here and they can't do that part, right? So the problem with the project song element is if you have way too many of those things, it's just too many things on your plate, right? If you're an adult and somebody says, okay, you got to go outside right now, you got to mow the lawn, you got to paint the house, you got to put up the fence, you got to change the siding, you're going to go, screw it, I'm just going to sit here on the couch and do nothing, right? But if you take one battle at a time, we'll call these small wins, right? If you take one battle or one win at a time and you start developing that. So this is the, the next thing for us to get into is with our ego songs, those are fairly easy to do. They make us feel good. They give us some practice. You know, when we sit down, we're going to play guitar and it's, you know, morning or first time we grab the guitar in the day. These are great songs to warm up to. They get us going. Now we're going to move into this project song. We've chose one song at this point to be our project song, right? And think about it because you've probably done this before. You're playing a song. It's going really well, going really well. And then bam, right here at measure 14 or whatever it is, you can't do that. There's something about that. Well, that becomes the win that we need to work on. Okay, so what we do is, if you think about it, we've got all of this real world stuff happening out here. These are songs. These are things we're playing. We're jamming with other people or we're jamming to the songs, the, the MP3s, whatever it might be. We're, we're playing music out here. But in the middle here, we've got these things that we need to work on. Okay, and we've already defined some of these things because in step one, we learned kind of who we are and what we're limited at you know, what our abilities are or our abilities are not, we're, we're figuring that out. Well, now this song has defined one of those inabilities, one of those lack, 
those, those, those elements that are lacking. So now we're going to take and we're going to start practicing that element. Now, later on in this, I'm going to explain to you some of the general things that you should practice on a daily basis to make you better. But that element becomes really important. Now, let's be honest. There are a million of these little elements as, as human beings, but we're talking about guitar playing anyway. There's a million of these elements we could get better at. The problem is, is it's insurmountable if we look at it that way because we're like, oh crap, I got to practice that and I got to do this. And now again, I got a five hour practice day. And again, if you have time, that's awesome. But if you don't, instead of trying to battle all of those things at once, let's choose one or two things to try and work on at a time. And again, those two things are going to be defined by who you are and your easiest ability to get from point A to point B as a guitar player. You might need lessons for that from your local guitar teacher, maybe, you know, or, or a friend or somebody that, that is in the know that can help you with that. So having fun, learning music, being in the, the, the realm of the real, which is playing music, okay? Work with that. Find things that are inspirational for you. Maybe you're not learning a song. Maybe you're just jamming to a jam track, but you're, you're, you're practicing elements that are fun for you that, uh, or an idea, a new inspirational lick that you just learned how to play or something like that, and you're applying it, and it's, it's getting you excited about playing guitar. Those are the kind of things that you need. Okay, so that's step two. Step three, which is really important, stop comparing yourself to the rest of the world. Okay? You cannot compare yourself to everybody else and then dog yourself because you're not as good as so-and-so. Okay? Every time I turn on YouTube, there's some kid out there that's five years old that's better than I'll ever be as a guitar player. If I was to sit and worry about that every single time I wake up, I'm never going to get anywhere in my life. Right? You can't do that. You have got to, to stop comparing yourself to the world. Figure out who you are, what you're good at, and what your goals need to be, and start working on it. Okay? Don't compare yourself to everybody all the time because it's impossible. You will always lose. You will never be the best because there is no such thing. Okay? You could love Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan is not Steve Vai. Steve Vai is not B.B. King. B.B. King is not Billy Gibbons. You know, they're, they're all different guitar players, and they all serve their purpose, and they're all wonderful at what they do at. Uh, or, excuse me. They're wonderful at what they do. Um, but they're different people. You're different than me. We all have different experiences in our life. We have different goals in our life. And so the more you start realizing that, the less you're worried about everybody else, and the more you start worrying about who you are and what you're going to do with yourself. So instead of always having this five years from now, five years from now, five years from now, that's great. But let's focus on who you are right now. Let's focus on what you can actually do with yourself today as a guitar player and then start working out from there. Okay, so stop comparing yourself. Screw everybody else. Don't worry about that. Okay, you can use the competitiveness to make yourself better, but most people do not. Most people use the competitiveness to make themselves bitter, right? They get pissy. They get mad at everybody else. They're always complaining about things. They're always mad at this or jealous of this and complaining about this and and chances are you'll see it underneath this video, right? People are always complaining. You cannot concern yourself with all that kind of stuff. You need to figure out who you are and where you're going to go from here to try and achieve some of these goals. Create realistic goals. Create goals that are achievable next week or next month. If you make 50 of them, they're not going to be achievable, okay? There's a, there's a business model out there that's referred to as Scrum. S-C-R-U-M, if you've ever heard of that before. And what it says is, if you've got 50 different things that you're trying to achieve, it's going to take compounding time. It's going to take you so much longer as opposed to going, I'm going to grab this one, and I'm going to work on this. And then I'm going to grab this one. Because then you've got successes. You've got small successes that you could actually use in your life along the way. As opposed to going, okay, well, I'm going to try and do all of these every day. It's going it, to, again, it compounds. It's going to take so much longer to try and achieve these things. Don't do that, okay? Let's try and define what those things are that you actually need, figure out where you are, and how to achieve those elements, okay? So setting a, a stop com comparing yourself to other people. So number four, which I was just kind of talking about, is setting realistic small wins or goals, figuring out how you need to get from point A to point B. If you're learning open chords, how to make them better. If you're learning open chords and you want to learn power chords, how do they work? How does palm muting work? Blah, blah, blah. All those kind of things. Making logical steps. If you're learning how to play open chords right now and you want to learn how to sweep pick, 
That's a big jump. Okay. And again, I'm not saying that it's not possible. Amazing things happen with human beings. But for the most part, you're going to have a lot of frustration trying to get this bridge built from here over to here, where if you'd built smaller bridges in between, you could get there in a much shorter amount of time. Okay. So setting realistic goals. Again, ego versus project songs. Ego songs are realistic goals. Ego songs with a small push, a little bit harder, not project, but a little bit harder. Those are realistic goals, but you have to know what those goals are. You have to know who you are to be able to define what an ego song is versus a project song, you see? And then the last thing is, is developing a daily practice routine. And again, everybody's different, but I am uh, going to give you a couple of tips of just daily practice things that you should do, okay? Number one, you should be practicing your right hand ability. And I've got videos on these and there's a bunch of different videos on YouTube that you can find of learning how to practice your ability of down picking and alternate picking. Again, you don't have to define yourself as trying to be the fastest or the cleanest. You're going to be the fastest and the cleanest that you can be, right? But you're developing your right hand. That way, when you go to do single note picking or scales or licks or anything like that, you've got abilities with your right hand to be able to execute those things. So basic fundamental right hand techniques. And again, there, there's a bunch of different videos out there. Um, I have one, I think it's called Fundamental Daily Practice Routine, something like that. But, but um, it, if, it's on the Guitar World website too. If you go to Guitar World and you type in Steve Stein, um, it's on there. But anyway, so it's, it's learning how to do that. Next thing is, is developing the left hand, the strength of your four independent fingers by doing legato exercises just to develop the strength, get the blood flowing, all of those kinds of things. And then the third category is, is synchronization between your two hands, learning how to play scales or finger exercises. And again, you don't need to try and make 5,000 finger exercises every day. Just learn some fundamental exercises, even if it's just going... <laughs> Not focusing everything on absolute speed, but clarity and understanding and feel. Are you actually, is your hands actually synchronizing together to make these things happen? If you're always trying to barrage into a metronome, and again, don't get me wrong, I have videos that talk about playing with a metronome and I think it's awesome. But if you're always battling a metronome and you're not prepared physically or mentally, you know, it's first thing in the morning and you're trying to play at a speed that's just outrageous, you're just going to frustrate yourself. So you have to become, again, like step one, in tune with who you are and what you need, right? So using the metronome wisely to achieve your, your successes or your goals is really important. But setting the, the, the metronome at a place where you're just faking it and you're just trying to play fast for the sake of it just to get it done or whatever it might be, that's not really benefiting yourself. So again, that goes back to step one, really knowing who you are, being in tune with your successes, and your, your future successes, yeah, I'm not going to call them failures, but your future successes, the things that need work. Um, so, and then the next category, we've got, you know, uh, we've got right hand, we've got left hand, we've got synchronicity. Okay, that's all technique. That's what that is. That's one thing that you should practice on a daily basis. To what degree, whatever you have time for. Another thing is, is either theoretical or visual understanding of your fretboard. Okay. Theoretical is obviously theory, right? Knowing your scales and, and things like that. Visual is less theoretical. Visual is being able to see things. Like when I first started learning how to play, um, you know, I played a lot of things like Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and things like that. And these guys all had like those chord progressions, which we see rock bands still doing today. So learning... You know, I didn't understand my theory... But I was very well aware of the fact that all of these bands were using these same shapes all the time, which made ear training for me a lot easier because I knew what to anticipate. When I started learning, you know, punk stuff like the Ramones, they didn't do those things. They did something else. You know, they used... They used those kind of chord progressions, uh, like pop music did. And again, I didn't understand all of that, but I visually... I knew what was happening there, and it made it easier for me to play the songs, made it easier for me to learn them by ear. Um, so again, another great thing for you to practice is that, learning visualization or theory, studying those things a little bit. So as you're learning songs, don't just learn your songs from a technical standpoint. Also be aware of what's actually happening on your fretboard. 
right? Memorize the patterns or the concepts that you're doing within those songs too, because they're going to recur through through other songs, whether they're from that band or from you know other bands of that similar genre, and sometimes not even. Sometimes something completely different. Um, another thing is if you're far along, far enough along in your playing, improvisation, learning how to play musically, not basing everything on your understanding and not basing everything on your technical ability, but just your musical ability to create things. You grab a jam track. You know, for me, when I was a kid, I didn't have jam tracks. ACDC Back in Black was my jam track. I would put on that album. And yes, it was an album. I'm that old. And I would just jam along with it. So, you know, Brian Johnson would be singing and then like he'd stop singing and I'd throw something in there. So I was like, you know, kind of playing against what he was doing. You know, I wasn't playing over him singing. I would wait for him, you know, a phrase to, to end and then I would put something in there. So it started kind of teaching me about musical ability and musical phrasing. So you might be just using a song that you already like and you're just jamming over the top of it or you grab a jam track and you just start exploring what we just did in, in category three, which was, or category two, I think it was, uh, was the visualization, right? So I'm looking at my fretboard and I'm going. So I'm not practicing a lick and I'm not practicing, I can do those things again. All of those things are valid. But right now, I'm not worrying about all of that. I'm just trying to feel the music and I'm trying to play musically. I'm trying to find something that's more musical. So I'm kind of culminating all of these experiences that I've had from these things we've talked about, and I'm trying to put them together. One of my favorite guitar solos, and there's a billion of them, but one of my favorite guitar solos is Mother by Pink Floyd. I just love the way David Gilmour plays. I, I, he's just an amazing guitar player to me. He's not the fastest guitar player. He's not the smartest guitar player. But for me, David Gilmour is one of those guys that when you listen to him play, Everything that he plays fits perfectly, and that's a personal opinion, but that's that's what he is to me. Um, so when I want something that's melodic, I, I go to him. None of his, his solos are hard, in my opinion, but when I play them, I sure don't sound like David Gilmour. He's got something musical, something real about him that I just can't, in my mind, I just can't replicate. And so he's very inspirational to me as a guitar player. So I want to find those things and I want to use that. So again, my train of thought isn't just about how fast I can play or my exercises or things like that. It's about creating music. That's where we're at right now in, in the step three. And then step four, again, going back is song study. I want you to remember that. We talked about it before, but it really should be a daily practice. Learning songs to create experiences from, to create ideas from, right? Right. Those songs are going to give you ideas. They're going to give you experiences. You're not going to create all those experiences on your own. If you've never played a Van Halen tune, you're not going to know what that's like. If you've never played, um, you know, Blackbird by the Beatles, you don't know what that's like. So they're fun to explore all of these different kinds of songs and just immerse yourself in different things. You know, Blackbird is finger picking. Um, you know, uh, Ingve Malmsteed is, is speed picking. If you want to learn how to play Black Star or something like that, I mean, there's there's just a million different things that you could learn how to do out there. Um, so my final advice to you, because I know this is getting a little long, slow down and enjoy it. Right? Learn how to listen to the music. Don't just be so concerned about technique, technique, technique. Yes, you need those, but. Learn how to listen to what's actually happening around you, too. Learn an Eric Clapton solo. Learn a Jimi Hendrix solo. Um, you know, whoever it might be. Learn a, a, a Ted Nugent solo. I don't know. I mean, whoever it is that you like out there. Um, but enjoy those things and, and relax and then define with those, those experiences what makes sense to you and what doesn't make sense and then decide what you want to do with that information. So hopefully that helps you to think a little bit about setting yourself up for a proper practice and proper future with achieving some of your goals with guitar playing. So take care, and I will speak to you soon.